Whether it's a camper trailer, a caravan, or even a boat, there's tons of likely off-road towing scenarios and some of the most epic spots just waiting to be visited. Towing a trailer off-road can be a daunting experience whether it's your first time or your 50th. So let's go through the basics of towing a trailer off-road, how to do it successfully, and more importantly, how to avoid getting bogged. But before I get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because we're releasing cracking new videos just like this one every single week and you're not gonna wanna miss a thing. First things first, let's talk tow rigs because there's not much point in knowing all the tips and tricks if you're towing with the wrong vehicle. That could just end up being a disaster. It's pretty simple. The bigger the trailer you're towing, the bigger your tow rig needs to be. In terms of modifications, anything to get a bit of extra grunt is always handy off-road. A free-flowing exhaust to get the motor breathing better, a power chip or a flash tune, and even a throttle controller to take the lag out of the throttle. That last one won't net you more power, but a more responsive throttle is never a bad thing. Now, big tires can be a blessing and a curse. They definitely help with traction, but drain much needed power too. Something around two to four inches bigger than standard is ideal. And make sure you have proper rated recovery points front and rear, as well as a good recovery kit and a winch, because things can and do go wrong off-road, and having proper recovery gear will genuinely mean the difference between a quick recovery or being bogged for hours or even days. Now some simple pre-trip preparation will make things so much easier when you're out on the tracks and behind the wheel. Regular trailer maintenance is always a good idea. Wheel bearings are one of the most common fail points of any type of trailer, particularly one that's towed off-road through water of any description. Imagine how hot your wheel bearings get after a couple of hours of driving on a long dirt road, and then imagine what happens when you cross even a shallow creek crossing. The bearings suddenly and rapidly cool and have the potential to draw in water. That water then washes out the bearing grease, which keeps your wheels spinning smoothly, rusts out your bearings and ends up with you on the side of the track with a seized hub. It's not fun. Before you head away, jack up each wheel using proper safety precautions and check for proper operation and tension of each bearing. Spin the wheel to check it spins smoothly and doesn't groan or grind. And then grab the wheel at 12 and 6 o'clock positions, rocking back and forwards. If there's even the slightest bit of play in the bearings, they need adjusting. Now, if you've never done this before, don't stress, we're gonna cover this in detail in an upcoming video. And while you're at it, check the brakes are properly adjusted and in particular, are not over adjusted and dragging. Finally, in terms of trailer setup, it makes a massive difference if your trailer has the same wheel track as your tow vehicle. That's the width between both wheels on a single axle. That's so that the trailer can follow the tow vehicle's wheel tracks in soft terrain like sand. I'll show you that in practice in a moment. You can alter your trailer's wheel track a couple of inches with different offset wheels. They don't need to be exactly the same wheel track as the tow vehicle, but it should be in the ballpark. Okay, so now let's talk practical towing tips, and it all starts right here with the correct trailer tire pressures. There's so much misinformation and confusion about whether you should or you shouldn't lower your trailer tire pressures when you're off-road. I'm here to tell you, you absolutely should. Lowering trailer tire pressures increases tire footprint, spreading the weight of the vehicle or the trailer over a greater area. Think of it like walking in mud in bare feet and then doing it with big wide planks of wood for shoes. The wider the surface contact area, the less likely you are to sink down into the terrain. Generally speaking, lower your trailer tire pressures to the same pressures as your tow rig for any given terrain. That's around 16 psi for sand, 20 psi for low range hills and 28 psi for long dirt roads. Now, if you find that it's too soft once you got on the beach, don't be afraid to pull off to the side and air down a couple more PSI. Now, I've run as low as 10 PSI on the beach in the middle of summer, but be aware you're substantially compromising your steering, accelerating, and your braking capability, and you're much more likely to roll a tire off the beat if you turn too sharply. So the lower your tire pressure, the more care you need to take while you're driving. The exception to the rule here is if you're running small tires with a heavy load, like little boat trailer tires and a big boat. In that case, play it by sight. Definitely lower your trailer tire pressures, but it may not be all the way as low as you drop your tow rig pressures. Now towing a trailer up the beach unlocks some of the most amazing destinations. Here's how to do it and avoid, or at least minimize getting bogged. Tides, tire pressures, and throttle. Those are the three keys to successfully towing up the beach. Ideally, you wanna hit the beach about two hours before low tide, so you have a solid four hour window of the tide running out and back in again. 
giving you access to as much hard packed sand to drive on as possible. Look up your tide charts for the beach you're heading to and stick to them. I cannot stress this enough. I covered tire pressures in the previous section, but let me say again, no higher than 16 psi, but don't be afraid to go lower if you feel like you're struggling. The bigger the trailer, the more traction you'll need. And the only way to get more traction on the sand is of course to lower your tire pressures. Now for the big one, throttle control. Towing on sand is all about controlled momentum. The aim is to get the vehicle rolling as easy as possible with minimal throttle input. The more you slam your foot down on the throttle, the more the wheels are gonna spin and dig into the sand. And that's definitely not what you want. You wanna sit up on top of the sand. So when taking off or accelerating, drive as if there's a rusty nail sticking up into your foot under the accelerator. Now it might take you a little bit to pick this up, but trust me, the easier you are on the throttle, the easier it's gonna be for you to tow your trailer up the beach. Now when you're coming to a stop, time it so you slow down without the brakes wherever possible. Slip the car into neutral and let the sand slow you down. That'll prevent sand piling up in front of your tires as you stop and make for much easier takeoffs. And remember what I was talking about earlier about matching your trailer's wheel track to your tow rig? Here's a perfect example of what that means on the sand. The trailer is following in the vehicle's wheel tracks across the top of the already compacted sand instead of dragging through soft, fresh sand creating its own wheel tracks. It makes a huge difference and takes a massive load off your tow rig. And just in case, a set of recovery tracks is always a good idea on the beach. Two sets is ideal if you've got the space and the budget to carry them. Now, if you've got a dream four-wheel drive destination in mind, like Cape York or maybe even out to the Kimberley, then here are a few tips and tricks that'll help you take your trailer along with you. Like with sand, it all starts with the correct tire pressures. Traction on dirt is more about safe driving than it is about preventing being bogged. 28 PSI is a good dirt road tire pressure that will allow your vehicle and your trailer's tires to mold around the terrain, softening the ride and preventing wheel spin. When you lower your tire pressures, the sidewalls can flex more and actually start acting like a second set of shock absorbers, absorbing a lot of the roughness of the track. If you have a part-time four-wheel drive that gives you the option for two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high range and four-wheel drive low range, you should select four-wheel drive high range on dirt roads. This means in the event that you hit a washout, a big patch of bull dust, or come up on an unexpected corner, you're less likely to over or understeer. But the biggest tip when it comes to dirt road driving, almost everything that goes wrong can be traced back to excessive speed. Wash off about 10 to 15 k's an hour and things happen a whole lot slower, giving you way more reaction time to adjust to whatever pops up. So your dream campsite is at the top of a super steep high country track, or you're dreaming of tackling gunshot up in the Cape. Here's how to do it with your trailer on. Now if you've got this far, then it's safe to assume that you don't need to be told to use full low on a low range track. But I will say that the key to successfully tackling a tough low range track with a trailer on the back is to plan ahead. That means getting out, walking the really tricky sections and deciding on what line to take. It also means building up the low sections of the track with rocks and logs to minimize wheel lifts or bad side angles. And part of your plan should definitely be getting your winch ready. Because there's no shame in winching through a tricky section of the track, but there's a lot of shame in breaking a diff or a CV or caving in your front quarter panel and two doors because you hit it way too hard. Having the right recovery gear and not being afraid to use it is vital to towing a trailer up a tough low range track. And here's a beaut little trick for descending steep low range tracks manually activating your trailer brakes. Just about every electric brake controller has a manual activation button, which lets you apply the trailer brakes independently of the vehicle. This can be very useful if the trailer is starting to get a bit crossed up and offline, because by braking the trailer, you slow it down and let it fall back behind the tow vehicle again. Of course, that only just scratches the surface of towing a trailer off-road, but if you try and remember these simple tips, tricks, and techniques, it'll minimize your chances of something going wrong. But I wanna know what you reckon. So if you think I've missed any of the essential tips, make sure you leave me a line in the comments section below. And before you go, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on any of the cracking upcoming content we have in store for you.